Good morning, it's time for First Look, our unboxing series, and today we're taking a look at a really interesting NFT slash DeFi project called the Idols Guardians of Ethereum. It is, it's a weird one, this one. It's using some of the features of Olympus, and you can see here, there's kind of this Greek-inspired graphics here, very reminiscent of that. But it's also using something they call the virtuous cycle to create effectively an, an ETH harvester, which benefits community Toki holders. And it's kind of interesting, this one. So um, the most interesting thing for me is that way back when I actually came up with an NFT project for the Defiant. We'll get into that because so many of the things that I came up with, well, they're here. And for that reason alone, it's very, very interesting to me. But of course, all of that coming up after these messages from our sponsors. Scamwix, insider order books, cascading liquidations. Suffer these compromises no longer when trading crypto futures. Enter GMX, a futures and swaps dex with low swap fees and zero price impact trades. Aggregated high quality price feeds provide fair liquidations and pricing. GMX is available on Arbitrum and now Avalanche. Trade BTC, ETH, AvaX, and more securely from your wallet with up to 30 times leverage. GMX is mobile and desktop native, including limit orders and stop losses. Visit gmx.io today to start trading, learn about high yield opportunities, and discover the Blueberry community. So yes, you did hear it first. We were gonna do an NFT PFP project. It was called DeFi Ants. Get it? DeFi Ants? And it was gonna be the membership token of the Defiant embedded with DeFi superpowers to make it a lethal bear fighting weapon. Yes, I was already thinking about the bear market in this period. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, so there were a couple of things that I was concerned about. One of which was, could you create an NFT that had a yield bearing asset property to it? Um, so that even if you were in the midst of a horrible bear market, you would still get something back for owning the NFT. I was just preoccupied with that idea. Um, was also trying to solve the issue of volume. Like when these projects go through this, these boom and bust cycles of volume, and volume is what generates secondary sales, which generates profit. How do you create a flywheel for that that would allow the, no matter what the bear market conditions were, you know, whether it's bull or bear, you would always be generating that secondary market sale volume and creating. Um, profit, which could then be cycled back into ownership of the NFT. And I was also interested in how you could create a, a marketplace that was isolated from OpenSea, and there would just be a place where people could come and get the the asset that you wanted. And I was also interested in, in ways to make um, NFTs actually work together. But that was basically it. So I'm going to link this document that I put together. I mean, I, I sort of put all the ideas I had into this document. And this was, I think, back in April last year that I came up with this. And we never ended up doing it because ultimately, I think we decided that the, the overhead of running an NFT project would be too much for us to, to handle. But fundamentally, one of the key things that I wrote into this was that 100% of the ETH that would be raised during a primary sale would then be put into something like a Yearn Vault, or um, maybe it was put into Anchor, but something that would generate yield and that yield would be returned back to the NFT holders themselves. That idea is exactly what's going on here with the idols. So let's break it down. So here are the idols. You may or you may not like the art. Personally, it's nah, not really my jam, but does that really matter? What matters here is the functionality. So as they say here, this is the first staked ETH NFT. And what's going on here is these NFTs are backed by staked ETH in the idle treasury. So all the ETH that happened that, that they acquired during the sale is then turned into staked ETH using Lido. And this is Lido. We've covered it on the channel before. This is a way for you to stake ETH on ETH 2.0. And the APR is 4.6% at the moment. Wonderful. Uh, so what they propose, if we go down here, is that the idle NFT owners will earn staking rewards from that staked ETH from the treasury itself. But that's not all that's going on here because they have this virtue token as well. So they have a virtue token which can only be acquired by bonding staked ETH into the treasury. 
So you bond staked ETH into the treasury and virtue token holders who've acquired this virtue token by bonding staked ETH into the treasury will then earn the 7.5% commission on idle NFT sales. Uh, so anytime there's a sale of the NFT, there's a 7.5% commission. This goes to the virtue stakers. If you hold an NFT, you're getting the staking rewards. Now, if we looked at the staking rewards, where it is, 4.6%. And then you look at the Virtue Token Commission, it's 7.5%. So there's an incentive already there for, for people to become Virtue Token holders because if there's a, a good market for this, then that will make sense. Now, of course, you might really only be interested in ETH. So if you're an, an NFT holder and you want those ETH rewards, then that's a good place to be. But actually, if you think I can get more commission and earn more on this side, then maybe you do that. So you've got this kind of game theory mechanic going on. But essentially what you have here is an ETH harvester. That's basically what's going on here. In a proof of stake network, you want as much ETH kind of locked up and bonded in for the security of the network as possible. So that is why they call it Guardians of Ethereum. So they're basically building this flywheel for harvesting, preserving, and generating yield with Ethereum. And they do it through this combination of an NFT and a token. Just now you just sort of see why it's interesting. And of course you've got this Olympus style bonding mechanism and all the Ponzinomics that go with it. But of course this isn't Ponzinomics, it's staked ETH, which you may think is a Ponzi, but it's far less of a Ponzi than the kind of 8,000, 9,000, 100,000% yields we've seen in other Olympus style Projects. <clears throat> so another key piece of this is the marketplace. Let's go and have a look at the marketplace. So you have this marketplace, and this is going to be completely separate to OpenSea. Crucially here, the reason they've got this marketplace is because there is no third-party fees. 100% of commissions are paid to the community with no additional external market fees. So on OpenSea, you pay 2.5% on top of the built-in revenue from the sale of the NFT itself. Uh, so they're expecting that that's where people will trade these NFTs. And of course, having this secondary component of the Virtue token itself, you should see quite a lot of volume going through, at least a constant reassessment of whether it's more profitable to be holding Virtue tokens or whether it's more profitable to be holding the NFT tokens them themselves. And of course, the NFTs... You know, they you might like the artwork, and you might that might be you know what you want to represent yourself. But there's this broader narrative, which is we are protecting Ethereum. It's it is kind of fun, the whole thing. So let's go into the economic mechanisms because this is where they talk about the virtuous cycles. We should go through this. So the core tenets of the Idols NFT ecosystem are cooperation, giving, and receiving. When Idol NFT holders and virtue stakers cooperate and give to each other, ah, friends, they both receive back something that is greater than what they've given. We call this the virtuous cycle. Here's how it works. Idol NFTs give a 7.5 commission to all virtue staking holders. As more royalties are given to virtue stakers, the staking yield for virtue increases. Increased yields for virtue staking will increase demand for the virtue token itself. Virtue stakers take virtue tokens off the open market. And when virtue tokens are taken off the open market, additional virtue must be acquired from the bonding curve. When new virtue token is emitted from the bonding curve, more staked ETH is deposited into the idle treasury. And when more staked ETH is deposited into the idle treasury, idle NFTs receive more staked ETH rewards in perpetuity. So what happens here is that the, the staked ETH that goes into the treasury just stays there. It doesn't get removed. Um, so once it's in, it's in. Let's have a look at this virtual token, the bonding curve. So this is what the bonding curve looks like. Masses of tokens at the start and rapidly decreasing. So as always, if you're early, fantastic. So be early. Don't know how I feel about that. Bonding curves always make me kind of spit up in my mouth a little bit, but I guess this is the way they've decided to do it. The founding team will be reserving 10 million tokens for the community treasury. Uh, they need this to acquire liquidity for, I guess, a virtue ETH pair somewhere, uh, whether that's on Sushi, whether that's on their own AMM. There's no real sense of where that's going to be. Uh, and then there's a plan to turn it into a DAO. Um, staking has no time lock and there are no penalties, fees associated with unstaking. That's nice to see. What else can we have a look at here? Uh, the roadmap. 
I don't put any stock by roadmaps. This means nothing to me. Um, I would rather projects didn't even put a roadmap up, just deliver cool stuff and there we go. But a secret NFT project number one will lock virtue tokens forever. Whatever that means. Secret NFT project number two will burn virtue tokens. Okay, whatever. Uh, this acquire liquidity for virtue token, it's gonna be important. Um, it'll be interesting to see what all of this looks like um, when, if we are in a protracted bear market. But fundamentally, I think this is a really interesting idea. And it's nice to see a lot of the ideas that I came up with for DeFi Ants actually put together. So the, the volume problem that I saw, I actually solved in a different way. I had a little game built in where you could swap out not all, but some of the attributes of your NFT. So you could constantly upgrade and there would be a reason to have guest artists come and do like different things. But as I realized that over time that becomes incredibly exhausting and not very sustaining. Um, this mechanism by which um, the virtue stakers are gaming off against the NFT owners and there might be a way to keep this relationship fluid. I think that's interesting. But again, you want to generate volume to generate commission to make the virtue stakers feel like their piece of the puzzle makes sense for them. And it'll be interesting to see if it works. Be interesting to see if it works. Undoubtedly, given the way the bonding curve is set up, there'll be an enormous amount of interest and excitement at the very beginning as people rush in to get as many virtue tokens as possible. After that, we shall see. So that's it for today. That's first look. Really interesting use of own Ponzinomics and NFTs. I don't love the art, but then do I have to? No, of course not. And Guardians of Ethereum, it's very memeable, isn't it? You can just see this one memeing itself to a really strong position and then, I don't know, we shall see. Um, if anything, 2021 has taught us is that memes are very, very powerful, but also very fragile. So let's see where this one goes. So that's it. If you have any suggestions for first look, please do drop them in the comments below. And as always, subscribe, like, dislike, do nothing. That is entirely up to you. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.